Hey guys, today's video is a little different from my typical content. I'm gonna be giving you my tips for working at home. This is something I know a lot about and I can help you guys out with. And I think it's something that you'll find useful. Real quick, shout out to today's sponsor, Athletic Greens, maker of this fantastic green drink that I've been really loving lately. It's really been a, a game changer in my morning routine. You all know what a creature of habit I am. Anyways, you may be wondering what the heck is a dermatologist gonna be able to tell us about working from home? A lot, actually. First of all, you may not realize this, but dermatologists have been affected, similar to many other people, by the current situation. Uh, while we do manage a lot of serious conditions, um, we really have had to scale back on, on what we do in office, and many, if not the majority, of practices have switched over to managing patients remotely via telemedicine. Dermatology, fortunately, is a specialty that's really conducive to this. Not only that, though, in the path leading up to becoming a dermatologist, you're a professional student for a long, long time. Even when you are a resident, which is the part of your training where you are technically a doctor, but you, uh, you're under a lot of guardianship, you still have a lot of student-like responsibilities, studying for exams, particularly in dermatology. So in my experience, I have had to work at home a lot, studying, and not only when I was a medical student, but I also was a graduate student at one point, getting my PhD. If you're not familiar, I have a PhD in molecular biology as well, and when I was getting my PhD, um, you know, obviously a big part of that is working in the lab, but another big part of that is writing papers, writing your dissertation. And the paper writing process is not something you want to do in the lab. It's too distracting in there. So that often will happen at home. You can go, go home and work from home, but you have to be disciplined in order to get the work done. So I have a ton of great tips for you guys. Tip number one, have a dedicated workspace. This is so important for your productivity. Make sure that it is a desk that's comfortable, you have all of your supplies that you need accessible so you don't have to get up and go into other rooms. It's gonna distract you. Make sure you have a really comfortable chair. And a big tip for setting up your workspace is keep it away from your bedroom. Is it in your bedroom? Then when you go to bed at night, all you're gonna think about is work and it's it's gonna disrupt your sleep. If you live in a studio apartment, and trust me, I did for many years, this becomes a little challenging, but you still can do it. And the way I did it is to get some room dividers. You can get them online. You can get them, mine came from Walmart, actually. Um, you can get them online, and they just kinda of help carve out a little niche niche of the space that is dedicated to, to work. So that that's a major one. Tip number two, maintain your rituals. You guys know I am a creature of habit. I do things the same every day, <laughs> every day. And if you switch from working out in the world to now being at home, there's no reason that your morning routine and your evening routine should change. It can be tempting to wanna sleep in late or stay up extra late. That can really throw off your daily routine. Try and keep it as close to what you are doing when you are out working, um, try and keep that as, as similar as possible. Yeah, my morning routine, I get up at 4 a.m. and I like to get a little bit of exercise in, have my coffee. I also love having a green juice. Morning rituals are so important for productivity. Check out my 4 a.m. morning routine video. I show you guys some of the things that I do in my morning ritual. Because I wake up so early, to be honest, I do not feel like eating first thing. So I have breakfast later on in the morning, but because I pack so much into my morning, I do try and fuel up with a little bit of something, even though I don't feel like eating. And Athletic Greens has been the perfect nutritional drink for this aspect of my morning ritual and productivity. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know I've tried a ton of these different green powders and they've all tasted foul, but Athletic Greens is the exception. It's got a nice vanilla taste to it. I first heard about it from a friend of mine who is a triathlete and he recommended it to me um, when we were chatting about how I've been running outside a lot more and it's so hot and whatnot. 
and he has been consuming this for a while and so I wanted to give it a try and I love it and I have it in the morning first thing in the morning but then I often have another serving with a workout it's sourced from whole food ingredients and it has all of my favorites in it that you guys see me buy and use all the time different adaptogens the product is third-party tested and has the NSF seal, so you're getting really good quality. It's developed from a complex blend of whole food sourced ingredients, as well as 75 different vitamins and minerals. It's low in allergens, meaning there's no gluten, no dairy, no corn, egg, or peanuts, no animal byproducts, so it's vegan, no lactose, sucrose, or dextrose, and it dissolves easily in water, which I love because these things tend to clump up. Of course, always check with your healthcare provider before consuming something like this in case you're on any medications that might interact with the vitamins uh, that are in this. If you're interested in giving it a try though, check the description box. I have a coupon code. You can get a box of 20 packets free with your first purchase. That's a $79 value. It's a great choice if you're an athlete or just active like myself. And it's wonderful in this heat in particular. I've really been enjoying it after workouts. And it's great. I feel as though it helps with my recovery uh, from a sweaty outdoor workout session. There is no sugar and it is vegetarian, vegan, paleo, keto, whole 30, mind, dash, and low carb lifestyle friendly. I really think that this drink can support your work from home goals. A major distractor in our work from home routine is going to be fueling ourselves properly. If we don't eat well or fuel ourselves properly, we're going to have energy crashes. But alternatively, we can snack and graze all day and food can be a source of distraction and interrupt our productivity. So this bridges that gap, especially in times where your normal schedule is disrupted. Typically that might be like with travel, but in this case, newly adapting to working from home. I, I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this and find that it kind of helps bridge that gap and helps you stick to a normal daily routine. Getting dressed, doing your hair and makeup or whatever it was that you, however you got ready before, you should still do that. Even though I was probably like, well, who am I getting ready for? It helps your brain transition over to focus work mode. If you're just in comfortable clothes, you'll be tempted to like lounge about. You'll, uh, you'll go into weekend mode, relax mode. So switch over to those work clothes. They, they, are, they give you your, your body that clue that, okay, it's time to, it's it's time to be productive and it's it's really important not only that a lot of you guys are doing uh, zoom meetings and Skype calls where you're interfacing with people you need to be ready for that because you know those meeting times get switched around and if you're not ready and dressed early in the morning when you get up like you normally would be you know they may switch they may throw a wrench in your day and switch the meeting to a different time and you're still in your PJs and you're scrambling so just get get ready like you ordinarily would for a work day Tip number three, lean into technology. We have a lot of great apps at our disposal that are free and wonderful free resources online that can help streamline your workday and keep you on task. A um, app that I use is called Trello, T-E-R-E-L-L-O. This is great if you work um, with a team in particular because it allows you to categorize projects and put deadlines on them. It allows you to update people as you make progress on those projects and everybody can see and it's just really nice. It's almost like a digital file cabinet of projects and updates that people can see and it's really visually appealing to look at. It's nice to see all the little projects that you may be working on in columns and then they have like color coded tabs. I mean, for me, I'm a visual person. So that is a really great resource. There's obviously Skype and Zoom that people use. So make sure that you have your computer set up in a place where you feel comfortable having people look at you. You may not want to have it facing your unmade bed. You may not want to have it facing um, your kitchen or anything messy. Try and raise your computer up a little bit. Don't have it all the way down so that you're looking down like this. It kind of casts an, un like an unsightly shadow on your face. Instead, try and elevate it up a little bit so that the camera is like you're looking straight at it. If you can have your computer in front of a window where you're sitting in front of a window, that's great. That way, 
you have natural lighting on you and you look your best. And that's good because your boss, your manager, they want to, you know, that gives them an, an extra boost of confidence. Remember, they're feeling anxious and nervous too about having their employees away and out of their control. And so tuning into those meetings and seeing that their employee is like on their game, it reassures them and you want your boss or manager to feel comfortable. And something that I recommend you guys, regardless of what profession you're in, consider using is called a VPN. This stands for Virtual Private Network. This is really helpful. What does it do? It's basically a secure internet connection between you, here, I wrote this down because I'm really bad at explaining, between you and the internet. And it's really helpful if you're working remotely. The connection is sent through an external, what's called a VPN server. And what that means is that your IP address, which is kind of like your digital home address in a sense, is protected and private. Um, your location and your data traffic all are hidden within this network. It's basically like, like if you just visualize it as a, as a pipe and that's how you're looking, that's how you're surfing the internet and going online is in, within this pipe and the rest of the internet has no concept of that. The reason it's nice is that A, it hides you from a lot of advertising. You know, Google and Facebook, they collect data on your IP address and your searching habits to then, to, to then determine what ads they show you. And being on a VPN protects you from that. It also hides your locations. It hides your location, it's more secure, it protects your privacy, and obviously if you are doing work, it protects your work from potentially hackers or things like that. So a VPN is, is really helpful. How do you get one? There are a variety of different ones. Um, your work will probably set you up with one that they want you to use. But if you work for yourself, there are also a variety of them that you can buy as a subscription. Some are better than others. I am not the best at, at knowing which ones are good. So I recommend doing a little bit of a little bit of research before um, paying for one because some are better than others, I do know that, but um, it's nice. Avoid distractions. It's so easy to get distracted and have your whole day derailed. Pretty soon, you know, you're like, I've just been on, I've just been on Instagram for two hours looking at people's dogs and cats and I've done nothing. And I have a, I have a meeting with my, my nervous boss at 3 p.m. and I'll be like, look at the dog I found on Instagram. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. Um, so get your delete all of your uh, all of your social media apps or hide them so that you can't access them uh, and put yourself on a strict window of no surfing time i set a timer actually and i'm not allowed to go on the internet until the timer goes off that way i i don't you know surf or look at things cancel or turn off all little notifications that may blip through on your screen or on your phone silence your phone now that you're working from home, this is more important than ever, but it's always important. And that is communication, communication. Honestly, the majority of medical errors happen because of poor communication. You can never over communicate. If you feel like, oh, I don't wanna bother this person, communicate, communicate, communicate. Everyone needs to be in the know. That way there are no surprises. What do I mean by this? Make sure that if you have a boss or a manager that you're communicating with them on a consistent basis, what it is that you're doing, what your goals are for the week, what you plan to accomplish, what projects you're working on, what progress you've made. That way they know what you're doing. That gives them peace of mind so they're less prone to micromanage you because it's like, oh, okay, all right. He or she knows what they're doing for the day. Like, I don't have to worry about them. They're, 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 they're moving along. So it gives them peace of mind and will get them out of your hair. The other reason it's important is that you may have in your mind what you want to, what you want to accomplish for the week, but it may not align with what your company or business or, you know, whomever you're working for, what they want or what other people are working on or other people are maybe working on the exact same thing. And you guys are now butting heads and you didn't realize it and you've done all this work, but the other person has already done it. So communicate, communicate, communicate. In medicine, this is key over community, you know, you can never, communicate too much to patients or pharmacies or nursing staff, communication is key. For example, when I was a graduate student, I would communicate with my PI a lot when I uh, would switch to being at home and writing. So for example, when I was writing a grant, 
I would say, all right, this week I'm working from home, writing the grant, I'm working on the grant. Um, and this week specifically, I'm gonna be working on the specific aims, which is part of the grant, we'll say as an example. And by Wednesday, I'm gonna have to you a draft of the specific aims uh, for you to give me feedback on. And while you're reading that, I'm going to then start planning out my figures for the, the grant, which are you know the images of your data and how you lay them out and everything. So I would kind of lay out to my PI what I was doing. I would also communicate to other people in the lab if I had anything in the lab that you know they needed to help me with or that um, I was working on. I would communicate with them and be like, "Is there any issue going on that I need to come in and address?" Obviously, that's not going to be relevant now to you guys, but. Communication is one of the cornerstones of professionalism and being a professional and this instills a lot of confidence in the people that you are working with and working for and it allows you more autonomy. They're going to interrupt you less. So that is, is key. My next tip is for those of you who are feeling lost and afraid, like you don't know where to start, you feel like you're out of control, you're out of the framework that you once were in, what to do. And that is to schedule your day. Schedule, schedule, schedule hour by hour what you're gonna do. Be as detailed and precise and explicit as possible and stay on top of that schedule. It will help and you don't have to do that necessarily indefinitely through this period of time, however long it may be, but in the beginning it will really help you. It builds a framework, it structures your day and that gives you some peace of mind and gives you clarity to be more objective with your decision making. Number eight, piggybacks off of scheduling yourself, and that is schedule breaks. This is really important. It will help you avoid burnout. It will give you something to look forward to, which will motivate you to continue working during those blocks of time that you've scheduled for specific tasks. Schedule breaks. If you don't schedule breaks, you're gonna burn out, you're gonna get brain fatigue, you're not gonna be able to focus, concentrate, your creativity will suffer. Get outside, take a walk. Um, Pick up around your house if you need to for a few minutes. That can be relaxing and just a nice, pleasant distraction. My next tip is to challenge yourself every day. That will give you a sense of accomplishment. As you transition to working at home, you'll notice that you're getting much less feedback on a re regular basis. That may be a good thing if you were getting a lot of bad feedback before, but if you're someone who thrives on positive feedback and you're no longer hearing that consistently, you may feel a little uncertain as to how you're performing and you may just have some anxiety about the outlook of the future, all understandable. Having a little challenge each day where you have measurable progress, it can really instill some confidence in yourself and that's going to translate to your work as well. So for example, maybe it's a little fitness goal. Maybe it's to challenge yourself to start cooking more. You can't go out to a restaurant. So get excited about a recipe that you wanna try making. Maybe it's something really challenging that you never had the time to figure out before. Making bread, for example. Build in those little challenges. When you accomplish them, you're really gonna feel good. It's gonna instill more confidence in you. It's gonna make your work life much better. My final tip is to have a hard and fast stop time. This is really important because if you're like me, I have a tendency and I wasn't always very good about this when I was uh, a professional student for so long, having a stop time. I would just continue to work and work and work and then wake up early in the morning, do my little ritual and continue to work and work and work. Having a hard and fast stop time where you stop working is so important for your mental health and it helps you transition to nighttime, evening time, relax, unwind and go to bed. And that's really important for longevity and avoiding burnout, getting good restorative sleep, healing your brain, doing some things that are creative, enjoy, bring you enjoyment and allow you to rest. It's so important. It's really easy when you're when you're working in your in your dwelling to just keep working and working and working. Especially if you are on a roll and things are going well for you, don't just, you know, don't get caught up in that positive roll and keep going 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 going. Uh, I can take you to, to an unhealthy level of work. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're still keeping a good work-life balance. So having a, far, a hard, firm stop time in your work from home day is really important. Like at this time, I'm done, I'm gonna start making dinner, um, connect with my spouse or whomever else may be living with you, go out for a walk, go to, you know, meet, I can no longer go to the gym, but you know, do my at-home workout or go for a run outside. These hard, fast stop times are, Something are just as hard to discipline yourself to do as, as the rest of your workday from home is the stop time. 
So those are my tips, you guys. I have done a lot of working from home in my lifetime, so I hope these little strategies and techniques are useful to you, especially if you've never worked at home before and maybe you're someone who struggles when there's not a lot of laid out structure and you feel you're just feeling a little anxious i hope these tips are helpful to you guys now more than ever is really the time to take control over your routine and your healthy habits athletic greens is actually available in not only the u.s but canada uk and throughout europe i call it my nutritional insurance it's one of the most complete formulas out there packed with 75 vitamins and minerals but click that link in my description box and you can get a 20 count of athletic greens travel packs for free with your first purchase i love these and as a matter of fact, I'm going to have one tonight after, after I go for a run. I'm going to go for a run outside tonight. Uh, it's so hot already <laughs> um, that that's going to be perfect. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.